So the FCC, among other things in its order, has just announced that they can use forbearance even without doing a competition analysis, which means that when the Republicans take over the FCC, they could use that precedent to gut not only this order, but anything else they want in, in any, anywhere in the act. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, the FCC keeps promising that they only want to use Title II just for net neutrality, not for a host of other problems. But of course, some other commission, whether it's a Democrat or Republican commission, isn't going to be bound by that promise. They could use Title II for anything. So my question is, given that this could be a political football in either way, and that the, the FCC could do much more or much less, uh, depending on who's in power, and that the FCC may just lose completely on all of this, not least because it wouldn't take the time to put out one more notice and spend a month getting a final round of comments, why wouldn't we be better off with legislation that is narrowly tailored to net neutrality harms, doesn't invoke Title II, doesn't let the FCC rewrite the entire Communications Act however it sees fit? Bit of definition, forbearance is when the FCC can say, well, there's all these rules that are in Title II of the Communications Act. We are not gonna apply these to this case because they were written for voice service and they don't affect broadband. So, there's been an effort recently, after the FCC's you know, strong order and sort of a signaling that they would go in that direction, there's been an effort now to pass legislation, perhaps. Now, just to be clear, the people who are mainly pushing for legislation have been opposed to net neutrality for a long time. At least, they were seen as opponents of net neutrality. And so all of a sudden, they say, oh, let's do legislation. And the discussion draft and the kind of proposals out there had what I would consider to be loopholes. But if there were legislation written by Marvin Amori and Chip Pickering, uh, you know, I would vote for it because I would have written it. And that is actually more permanent than an FCC solution. I do think that the FCC, um, what they have done is strong and will stand up in court. And when it comes down to it, when you have a majority, you can, you can, um, you can do things, right? And so, you know, if you, get, if you can convince the majority of commissioners to adopt a really strong rule, then they will do it. And so going forward, we've got to make sure that we can continue to persuade Congress and the FCC that they should be on your side, not on the side of Comcast and Verizon uh, to, to the detriment of you. Well, I'll just, I'll just say a couple things. First of all, it's not ne the next FCC cannot just snap their fingers and undo what we've done. They'd have to engage in a proceeding, and this was a long and painful one, and that proceeding would have to be subject to judicial review. So it's just not that easy for the next FCC to either re-regulate or deregulate, for that matter. That's number one, okay? Number two is, Nobody said we reclassified just to do net neutrality, okay? We are preserving our ability to protect privacy in the broadband world. I think people want that. We're preserving our, yeah, do people want their privacy in the broadband world? Okay, we're preserving our ability to protect people from ISPs ripping them off through slamming and cramming and, and, you know, and hidden fees. Do people want that? Do people want to be protected from third-party fees that they didn't pay for? I do. Do, do people want the ability to go after telephone companies who just switch you to another telephone company? We want to do those things, and we think the American people want us to do those things. Let me say one other thing, Baron, and this responds to your tweet from my South by Southwest panel this morning. Okay, let me explain to you how administrative law works. The FCC puts out a proposal for rules. That's what we did in May of 2014. It wasn't very popular, okay? But we put out proposals. We said we did propose that we follow a different legal path through Section 706 of the Telecommunications Act of 1996, okay? Which net neutrality opponents now love. They used to hate it, but now they love it, okay? We put out this proposal, but we also said at the same time Title II is on the table. And if we were to go the Title II route, tell us what we should forbear from. And also, by the way, we're considering applying uh, net neutrality, open internet rules to mobile for the first time. Tell us how we can do that. All of that was laid out in a notice of proposed rulemaking in May 2014. 
So to say now that what we did is completely contrary to our proposal is just false. We laid out two ways to go. You know, Jeremy Jenikowski originally was going to go Title II, and he went to 706. I didn't hear anybody complain. Well, I complained about it when I was at public I'm, knowledge, I'm but about it you too. know, we didn't say process foul. Okay, that's the whole point of public comment. Even though we had a presumption that we were going to go a certain direction, four million people told us to go in a different direction. Not all four million, but the vast majority of them. So we can change our mind. That makes us a good agency, not a bad agency. The FCC has never put out a full proposal for comment when at the same time it circulates to the other commissioners. Let me just explain how it works. Three weeks before we vote, wow, everybody's quiet now. Three weeks before we vote on an item, it circulates to the other commissioners. It comes to the chairman's office. It goes to the other commissioners so they can deliberate and figure out whether they want to offer edits. Never in the history of this agency has that been made public at the same time. Now, maybe that would be a good thing to do in the future, but to all of a sudden, in this particular matter, you know, snap your fingers and do it differently than it's been done for 80 years? No. Okay, so there's no process foul here. We did what we've always done, and we did it in the right way in compliance with the laws that govern this kind of rulemaking. So I'm proud of my agency, I'm proud of my boss, and I'm proud of the public. And I got nothing more to say, <laughs> nothing. <laughs>